Money is made when you buy a stock cheap and then sell them high or when a mutual fund is able to find undervalued stocks and sell them high. So how do you create a portfolio of 10 undervalued stock? Which are those stocks? How do you find them? When do you change them? Sometimes there are calls that go wrong like this one stock which as per their research was overvalued. So they had recommended to sell the stock but the stock went on to multiply four times. ICC Securities in its forecast one year back said that the stock could crash from the share price of 1600 to rupees 600 marking a 60% downside. But defying this logic the stock went on and the brokerage kept changing their target price but still showing a 60% crash probability. Any investor relying on this and would have sold one year back would have lost out on the opportunity as the stock rallied close to 5000 rupees. On the other hand of investing spectrum is a style called the value investing or value buying where you try to buy 100 rupees at say 50 rupees. Today we will study a portfolio of 10 stocks that are at the other end of the spectrum. It's an index. The idea is to limit the risk of going wrong in stock selection. As per the data from the fund house during their fund launch, these are value buys where the risk is relatively lower and the upside is higher. This has to be used only as a pointer to do further research on how it fits your overall portfolio plan. This comprises of just 10 stocks, the largest 10 stocks in the Nifty 50 and this is reviewed regularly or simply the largest stocks in the stock market. There are also caveats and downsides that you need to know. So I will be covering both the plus and minus. So please make it a point to watch the full video. As we analyze at this time, this data can be viewed to say the top 10 stocks by market cap in equal weight have beaten all other indices including Nifty 50, Nifty 100 over the long term. It gets very interesting when you couple this information with another one that this index has also outperformed the broader markets like Nifty 50 or Nifty 100 in specific periods. If you look at the calendar wise performance of this 10 stock portfolio or index, green color indicates that this 10 stock portfolio has done better than the broader market or indices. Red means this 10 stock index has underperformed or not performed as well as the Nifty 50. Now comes the important inference. If you think in the long term this portfolio or index will do well compared to the general market and at any current times it is underperforming the general market, it might be a good idea to consider investing. Only with the hope that these are cycles and this index will also spring back and if that happens it is a double whammy, a double booster because you are buying cheaper relative to something and then you have an opportunity to sell them when they are elevated, when they are expensive again related to something. That is beautifully explained in this chart. This is a chart of alpha. Alpha means additional returns of this 10 stock portfolio over the Nifty 50 or Nifty 100 index. When the alpha is negative, the three year future alpha has been positive and vice versa. If you had invested when the past returns or past alpha has been positive, then the future alpha has been negative. Currently, if you see the historic alpha is negative compared to Nifty 50. So if the past is any indication, you can guess what the future could be. Again, this is probabilistic. But timing wise, statistics wise, as per data of this fund house, using principles of regression in investing, what goes up comes down and the opposite. Investing is both art and science, they say. So you can manage the scientific part using the statistical evidence. Same as the case when you compare with Nifty 100, Nifty 500 stock index, the 10 stock portfolio is exhibiting negative alpha compared to Nifty 500. Whenever in the past the alpha was negative, the three year future alpha has been positive. Further, the weight of these 10 stocks as a factor of the total market size, if that was 35% or 40% high earlier, 
Today it is the lowest of 20%. As per data, when this phase changes to a polarization phase, the top 10 stock index equal weight has outperformed the broader market. As you can see here, P ratio or price to earnings is one favorite ratio used to compare if a stock or an index is cheap enough to buy or expensive as to sell. Red means the index is expensive and better to avoid. Green means it is available cheap and may be a good time to consider buying. So this top 10 stock index in comparison to Nifty 50 is not too expensive as on date. Compared to Nifty 500, it has favorable valuation zone to consider buying. There is also data that shows globally too, the best 10 companies tend to outperform the broader markets. Like in the US, the top 10 stocks from the S&P 500 have beaten the index over the long term. Or is it really so? This has come with cycles of underperformance. This underperformance was for a very long period. How many would be able to continue doing an SIP into a fund that has been underperforming for 10 years? Today, in the age of apps and AI, investors are nudged to sell mutual funds that are underperforming even for a year. How does one muster the courage to keep investing for 10 years in a fund that is underperforming and that too, there is no certainty that this fund may outperform at some stage. If you had bought this portfolio when they were underperforming and then waited for it to outperform, then it is a double engine boost. However, no one knows how long the underperformance cycle would have lasted or for that matter, how long an outperformance cycle would also last. So when we analyze data that we see at that time, it is based on the current context. At another time, the context changes completely. The top of the bull market looks so different from the depth of a bear market. So looking at similar data sets at these times will give a very different perspective. So which are the 10 stocks that comprise this index? These are the ones from sectors such as financial services, IT, FMCG, construction, oil and gas. All these are as of these times. It is no secret that some of these stocks have underperformed and that is what makes this index interesting from a value buyer perspective, from cheapness perspective or from a fundamental analysis perspective. This portfolio gets rejigged regularly because the stock has to be in the top 10 stocks selected based on six months average free float market cap from the Nifty 50. Each stock is equally weighted, which means if there is rupees 100 to be invested, rupees 10 approximately is invested in each of the stock. So the only thing I personally feel going for this is the recent underperformance of the top 10 stock index compared to the broader market. If you are someone who believes in buying something cheap, you can read up about this. I can share the detailed report and presentation. You can email me here. But will it be an evergreen strategy? I believe no strategy can be evergreen. It is like a pilot flying an aeroplane. Most days are good, but then there are those days, stormy days that he needs to maneuver. So in your portfolio too, there will be excess risks at times. You need to remove them through rebalancing. There can be times when you have to purchase stuff cheaper and yet at other times you have to sell because they are expensive. So in that context, if you want to invest today and if you want to buy something cheap, then you can read about the top 10 stock index and do consult your financial advisor as investing is risky. If you like content of this video, please do like, share and subscribe to this channel.